Welcome back for the annual looking back at prices of the previous October versus this October. We are looking at back at the pricing of the Silent Hill games. And next time, about a week or so from now, probably more closer towards Halloween, I'll be looking at prices last year and this year of strictly PS1 and PS2. Resident Evil games. So with that said, we'd be strictly looking at the North American release versions excluding the Japanese releases with Silent Hill. So with that said, starting off with the original classic Silent Hill for the PS1, last year at this time it was going for on average, keep in mind this is complete box copy with the manual and everything included. With that said, the basic normal PS1 version of the original classic Silent Hill, as of last year at this time, it was going for around $203. This year, it's going for $182.50. So, it's actually lost over $20 drop from previous year. Now, as of right now, my personal projection and thoughts I think for at least the very short term future, I think RE1 is probably going to stay relatively steady and might go up a little, possibly, but I think it's going to stay relatively steady. No real up or down. Just looking at the trend over the past several years. Now with the Greatest Hits version, at this time last year, it was going for $152, which is not bad for a Greatest Hits copy. Now, funny enough, this year, uh, the Greatest Hits version is going for $176, so the original version of Silent Hill 1 dropped over $20, while the Greatest Hits version actually went up, like, $24. So that's interesting. Last year, there was, like, a $50 difference between the two versions. This year, right now, there's only a $6 difference right now. Now, the real question is... Why is the Greatest Hits version gone up a decent amount while the regular has gone down? One, I think possibly because of it's a lot harder to find an original version PS1 of Silent Hill 1, where the Greatest Hits is a little bit easier to get a hold of for the most part. So I think maybe as that, and also there actually are people out there who actually collect only Greatest Hits versions. A PS1 games which is interesting unique to say the least but it is fascinating and supposedly there were some bugs originally in the original version that the greatest hits fixed because you didn't have patches and stuff back in those days unlike now but with that said going forward I think uh, the greatest hits version is probably gonna stay relatively steady but it could do a surprise and possibly go up more hard to say now, with Silent Hill 2, first we look at the PS2 version, uh, the base normal version. Uh, Silent Hill 2, this time last year, was going for $135. This year, it's going for $120. So, it's all a $15 drop from year prior in value. So, that's interesting. Silent Hill 2 has actually gone down some in the price, at least on the PS2. And I think that's because more people are interested in the Greatest Hits version of Silent Hill 2, as well as uh, Restless Dreams on the Xbox, as those versions include extra content, the base normal version of the game did not, which is why there's a little higher demand for the other versions. Also, in my recent top 5 uh, PS2 horror games, I said Restless Memories instead of Restless Dreams, don't know why. Just want to correct myself quickly. With that said, uh, the Greatest Hits version on PS2 of Silent Hill 2. Last year at this time it was going for $125. This year it's going for $125.50. So it went up like about $0.50 cents and that's it. No real change. I think moving forward for now, honestly, I have a question mark. I really don't know how to predict... The Greatest Hits version on PS2 of Silent Hill 2. I'm really not sure what to think. It's one of the more hard to predict ones. 
onto the PlayStation, or on the original Xbox version of Silent Hill 2. La this time last year, it was uh, basically $50, or more specifically, $49.99. Uh, this year, it is going for currently $45, so it actually saw a $4 drop from last year. Uh, moving forward for now, I think the Xbox version is going to stay relatively steady. I don't think, though, it might actually go back up, possibly, as this is the version with more content included on disc. So, I could see it becoming a more sought after. And in general, though, I do feel the Xbox versions of Silent Hill are somewhat more undervalued, as well as other horror games like... Um, a few other games out there like obscure but with that said the uh platinum hits version of silent hill 2 la this time last year went for 50 dollars this year it's going for right around 40 even so it's all about 40 or a 10 dollar drop from last year so that's interesting so if you're looking for a reasonable price and stuff think about getting the xbox version of silent hill 2 you can get the normal for 45 at least right now trending average price and about 40 for the platinum hits version now with that said we move on to silent hill 3 which was exclusively ps2 only and it to my knowledge at least that i looked for does not have a greatest hits version because uh silent hill 3 was not a huge success even if it is one of the more sought-after and beloved games today, also for its higher difficulty, personally, I just feel 4 is better overall game, in my opinion, superior and stuff, even though it does continue on the story of Silent Hill 1. So with that said, um, the game this time last year was going for just shy of $155. This year, it's going for just shy of $154, so it literally dropped like about $1, and that is it. So, I think moving forward, I think Silent Hill 3 is going to stay steady or possibly go up more. Why? Because even though it is in that Greatest Hits collection, it's a very inferior version of the game in the uh, HD collection. It's not worth your time. Uh, but unfortunately, since it is exclusively on console PS2 only, and there's not greatest hits, it's a much more rare Silent Hill game to get hold of. Because of those contributing factors is why I think the game is going to maintain its overall value moving forward for now anyways. I definitely do feel that way. Out of all the Silent Hill games of the 6th generation, it is going to be the one that's going to hold its value the most. And if Silent Hill... 2 does, it's going to be more just because of how beloved 2 is. And with that said, next we have Silent Hill 4, The Room, which did not get a greatest hits on PS2, and also did not get a platinum hits on original Xbox. So with that said, uh, The Room, this time last year on the PS2 version, the, was going for just shy of $125.00. This year, it's going for just shy of $109, so it actually did see a little dip in price overall. I think for now, moving forward, I think the game could possibly drop a little bit more in value, or stay relatively stay. I don't see uh, Silent Hill for the room going back up in price, just because it's not as, I feel, as... Um, beloved is other Silent Hill games though it is my second favorite in the series but I think it's because the higher difficulty curve and just because it's very different from the other Silent Hill games of the time period but also not being in the HD collection is another reason why though I could see possibly in the future maybe going back up but for now I think it's going to be more steady or possibly another little drop as it's not as sought after uh, with that said, the original Xbox version, uh, this time last year, was going for $47. Pretty cheap compared to the, well, PS2 version. Uh, this year, however, right now, it's going for around $51. So it actually saw a $4 increase in price. 
So I think moving forward, I could see Solomon Hill for the room on Xbox possibly going up a little bit more as it is for now still far cheaper. It is less than half the price of the PS2 version. And I think as more people end up interested in collecting for original Xbox, there aren't a humongous amount of survival horror games on the original Xbox. There's no Resident Evil to speak of. All you have is like some games like Obscure, uh, The Suffering, as well as you have, of course, Fatal Frame. And outside that, there's really only Silent Hill 2 and Silent Hill for the Room. So, because of having a lot less horror games on original Xbox, I think is one thing that may keep it holding its value and might go up a little bit more. With that said, we move on to Silent Hill Origins. Which is an interesting one. Last year it did go up a little from the year prior. However, uh, looking back last year versus this year, last year it was just right around $118 for Silent Hill Origins on the PS2. This year right now it's going for about $101. So it saw about a, almost a $17 drop in price. From last year i think it's going to stay for now relatively steady i don't see it going back up but i don't see it having a huge drop because origins only got released strictly on ps2 and on psp no other consoles it's not received a hd re-release nor did again grace hits version so because of those factors i do think it will still relatively hold its value a little bit more and over the years, I've seen more people starting to appreciate Origins, interestingly enough. The room still gets ignored by a lot of people for some reason. But this really was really the last, I would say, Silent Hill game that really felt with the more like the original games. And I thought the story was actually interesting in Origins. With that said, um, on the PSP, however... This time last year, Origins was going for about $49. Pretty dang cheap, right? Not bad at all. Around $49. This year, however, the PSP version of Selling Hill Origins is going for about $40. It saw a $9 drop from last year prior. So I think right now, I could see possibly the PSP version maybe going down or staying relatively steady. It could go either. I definitely don't see it going up. Uh, PSP is not as sought after a handheld to collect for, funny enough. Plus, a lot of people don't really collect horror games on handheld devices. I mean, that's obvious when you check values on stuff, because, like, Resident Evil Revelations is relatively more affordable, funny enough, on the 3DS. That's because people don't as much think about playing horror games on handheld devices. But with that said, that's my opinion on that. However, then we have Silent Hill Shattered Memories, which is an interesting one to say the least. With Silent Hill Shattered Memories, um, funny enough, this time last year, and this is a game I think for the most part it's going to hold its value, this has surprisingly become a very sought after Silent Hill game, weirdly enough. And it is a pretty rare game. It did not have a huge amount of copy sales on any platforms. With that said, the original re like release on the PS2, very limited run release on it. Uh, this time last year, it was going for three hundred and twenty-one dollars, series high price compared to all the Earth Silent Hill games. This time this year, right now, it's going for 327 so it actually saw a $6 increase from last year. What do I think is going to happen for with uh, Shattered Memories on the PS2 version? I think it's going to retain its value, if not keep going up. I can see it becoming something like Haunting Grounds or Roll of Rose, becoming one of the most sought-after survival horror games on the PlayStation 2. There are quite a few very sought after survival horror games on the PS2 as it is considered by many the best console for survival horror games. Which I can definitely see why. And because of that, I think it's going to retain its value unlike some of the Earth Silent Hill games. The PSP version 
This time last year was going for $94, not nearly as much like less than a third of the price of the PS2 version. This time this year, funny enough though, it's going for $102, so it actually went up $8 from last year. Moving forward, the PSP version, I think it'll stay maybe relatively steady. It may hold its value unlike, say, Origins because the the game's more rarity and because how much the PS2 version is, is going to make more people think about buying the PSP version just because of how insanely overpriced the PS2 version costs. With that said, there is the third option, which is the one I went with several years back, the Wii version. Um, the Nintendo Wii version last year was going for about 83 and a half, or more specifically, $83.58. Uh, this year it is going for $77, so it saw a several dollar drop from last year. Moving forward, I think it's going to stay relatively steady and might drop a little more, since it is a Wii game and a lot of Wii games don't tend to skyrocket in price. But I think it is going to be one of the more sought-after Nintendo Wii games, at least from my perspective, in any case. So I think it will probably retain its value more likely than many other games on the Wii. One, because it is the only Silent Hill game on a Nintendo platform, first of all. So that makes it a kind of sought-after by Nintendo fans. Now with that said, we go to next, the 7th generation with Silent Hill Homecoming, which did not get greatest hits on either platform, on the PS3 or the 360. Now this game gets very mixed opinions. Funny enough, in more recent years, I think I've started seeing more people talking a bit more positive towards the game now, less hate towards it than it was getting back several years ago, weirdly enough. But Homecoming, uh, because of it not being the sought after, the prices are very reasonable. Uh, this time last year, on the PS3, Homecoming was going for just over $21. This year it's going for right around $20. It's all just a little less than a dollar drop in price. So I think it's going to stay steady. Could possibly go up. We'll see. Hard to predict this one. Uh, then the 360 version, which was going for around $16.60 last year. This year, it's going for just over 19 So, it saw about a $2.5 increase over last year. I think it's going to stay relatively steady. I mean, I don't really see it skyrocketing or anything. But the fact that you can still find a game for like $20 means it's a very affordable, very easy, much easier to get a hold of the game. Though, I would recommend trying to get a hold of it now, while for a fact you can find it much easier on the PS3. And the 360. With that said, we look second to last normal game, and this is a game I think gets way too much hate. I find myself defending this game, besides also defending the room, and that being Silent Hill Downpour, which would be the first and only normal Silent Hill game that would not have its music composed by Yamioka, unfortunately. And funny enough, the weird opening theme music of the game is done by Korn of all bands. Uh, but with that said, the PS3 version last year was going for about $50, surprisingly. This year it's going for about $45, so it's all a $5 drop. But it is still going for over twice the price of Homecoming. Because Homecoming actually, I believe, sold it a little bit better overall than Downpour. But I think it's because now with some YouTubers, big names like um, Nitro Ran and others, have started talking a little more positive about the game in recent years. I think that's going to help influence the prices of it to possibly go up a little. People would be surprised at how much influence some bigger like retro gamers and stuff on YouTube can actually influence the market. I mean, seriously, you don't believe me? Look at past some fighting games like Rare... PS1 fine games when Max did his PlayStation Legacy on some of the games I noticed not too long after for about a month or so some of the games went up in price on like price charting and stuff so some big names in gaming can actually influence stuff believe it or not with that said the uh, PS or the 360 version 
of downpour was going for about $45 last year. This year is going for about $49. So we actually saw a $4 increase on the 360. Why? I'm not quite sure. I actually think, though, it's probably going to stay steady, if not go up. Just like I think the PS3 version may go back up, just because more people are getting interest in this game now. And the last regular official release was a Vita exclusive. Last year, and of course this is Book of Memories, last year it was going for $54.50, and this year it is going for $54 even, so it dropped $0.50 cents and that is it. So I definitely think Book of Memories is going to retain its value, possibly could go back up, as it's a Vita game. Vita is a much more sought after platform. Even though normally horror games don't do that well, keep in mind, this isn't a traditional survival horror. It's more of a dungeon crawler with elements of horror. But with that said, I do think it will retain its value, possibly go back up. With that said, last but not least, looking at the HD collections. The PS3 version was $21 last year. This year it's right around $19, so it dropped about $2. The 360 version was going for $29 last year, going for about $30 this year. It's going for about $10 more. Why? Because they released more patch updates to fix some of the glitch issues in the HD collection. And weirdly enough, the 360 version got more patch updates than the PS3 version did, which is why the one version is 50% more than the other one. But with that said, that is it for looking at the price history and my predictions for the next year. And we'll see next October how my predictions turn out. But with that said, stay safe and have a good upcoming haunting and a safe Halloween.